welcome to the advocates. There's something certainly vital about preserving our civic spaces. It speaks to liberty and our core rights. I'm going to talk about the rising rate of shrinking civic spaces in Nigeria. I'll mention a few names. Omoye Leshoware, Awa Jalingo, Elza Zaki, IG Wala, Abubaka Idris, popularly known as Nadiata, John Sabiri, Olawale Bakare, and so forth. One dot connects all of these names. They are all in detention for exercising their civil liberties and fundamental rights to free speech, free assembly, and free association. So the begging question is, are the spaces for civic engagement, including for civil society aspirations, expanding or contracting in Nigeria? Lately, Nigeria has witnessed a marked increase in the exercise of overbearing governmental power, which has not only created an atmosphere of fear in the country, but has always also considerably contracted the spaces for civil society and civic engagement. Government agents, including security forces, have particularly targeted bloggers, activists, journalists, and um, social critics demanding accountability for official impunity. The names I mentioned earlier are just part of the list of over 200 persons that have been arrested since 2015 and it's been documented on a database www.unclosedspaces.org. So the clampdown on bloggers and activists is now being compounded by the legislative proposals that hold enormous power to curtail basic human freedom, stifle free speech and control dissent on social media. Examples of such legislative proposals um, at the Internet Falsehood Manipulation and Other Related Matters Bill 2019, popularly called the Social Media Bill that is trending now, and the Prohibition of Hate Speeches and Other Related Matters Bill, popularly called the Hate Speech Bill. What are these bills for, you'll be asking. The first bill promises to suppress falsehoods expressed online, counter the effects of such false communications and transmissions on the Internet, and sanction offenders. The second bill aims to establish an independent national commission for the prohibition of hate speeches and our law unfair discrimination, particularly based on ethnic differences. So the punishment for various offenses created by these legislative proposals range from pain, fines running to millions of naira, up to life imprisonment and death penalty. These bills have raised a lot of dust for various reasons. First, the majority of the legal provisions in these bills have already been fully addressed by existing legislation. The Nigeria's 1999 Constitution, Nigeria's Cybercrime Act of 2015, Nigeria's Criminal and Penal Codes, and many others extensively cover the field and made robust provisions that both spelled out punishment, created enforcement mechanisms for addressing similar infractions and irregular conduct on the social media, and including the internet. So Nigeria has several state and federal laws that punish libel, slander, defamation, sedition, treason, forgery, fraud, and so forth. Not only that, a host of federal and state agencies, such as the National Human Rights Commission, National Orientation Agency, and the Federal Ministries of Information, National Cybercrime Adversary Council, and so many others were established by law to take on and address these issues. So are the sponsors of these bills not aware of existing laws that already address what is contained in these legislative proposals? Are they now saying that something is wrong with existing laws? Let's assume something is wrong. Can the inadequacies be cured by churning out additional duplicitous and repetitive legislation? Has anybody been fired, punished, or held accountable for these inadequacies? Is there not an opportunity to amend or repeal existing laws, or must we throw money to every problem that rears its head? The public disapproval and anger these bills have generated seem to be well placed. Nigerians have other serious problems deserving of parliamentary attention, not free speech regulation. Nigerians want more than just laws. As my Wafi brothers would say, my law we go chop. We need laws that will make bread and butter available on the tables of all Nigerians. One in every five of the world's ask of school children is in Nigeria, particularly in northern Nigeria. We need laws that criminalize kids being out of school and the state governors punish for not building enough schools. We need laws that criminalize public officers going abroad for treatment, while Nigerian hospitals are left to rot away. We need laws that castrate and instantly jail men who defy underaged girls. We need laws that guarantee jobs for every Nigerian youth that has completed university education. 
We need laws that make non-payment of worker salaries an impeachable offense for every state government in Nigeria. We need laws that make social and economic rights, such as housing, healthcare, education, employment, social welfare, pension, justiciable. This is what Nigerians have asked me to advocate on this episode of The Advocate. I rest my case. Excellent that case. Excellent case. <laughs> I know you like the castrate bit. I like the castration <laughs> bit. Because I looked been, at you when uh, yeah, you said castrate. I've been badly wanting that um, castration as oh boy. Uh, punishment, yes, for such offenses. So, like, you ask uh, me who will make these laws? Who will make these laws? Yeah. But also, but there's you definitely know, that people you know, who will make the laws. Eh? The we need to consistently <laughs> talk about it so that those people can come up and then make these laws. Mm. The electoral process, does it allow? Good there people. are people. There are good people. There are good people in our parliament who have been overwhelmed by the few bad people. Right. If few you, bad people. Yes, few. The bad people yeah. are very few. I, I can tell you, the bad people are very few. But they have overwhelmed. You no, know, do you mean the instigators are few? Because yes. I may not instigate things, but I'm yes. bad. Yes. And I, I wait for it to be yes, done, and then I, will, I put yes. my weight yeah, behind the instigators it. are few. There are many there are few. bad people. Yes, I, 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 I don't you. accept that. Because no. the previous uh, advocacy we made about um, pensions, is it not these people that get behind themselves to pass laws that are rich? The question you should be asking. You should be voting against them. The question you should be asking. It's obscene the to question. award yourselves. Let state. me ask but you. you. Let me tell it. you one. There was a, I can't really remember the state now, when he was speaker, a law was passed when he was speaker because he didn't have a say in the process, even though he was a speaker. But when he became, eventually became governor, the first thing he did was to repeal that same law that he passed as a speaker. No, but you know, because a few, it depends. That, I'm, I'm dealing with the, the balance here. Yeah. There should be other people like him who will stand against the law. If not, why are laws like, passed that like, are not Like in, in Zamfara favor? now, you have, what, what happened in Zamfara, for example, is the fact that you had, it was an APC state. Now is a PDP state. And PDP would want to show to the people what that, bad was look, going on, yes. right? This was the bad that was going on, yeah. and we can do better. Right. And, and so the first thing they did when the former governor complained about pensions, they repeal it, so that you know everybody is now praising them. Mm. And, and, and so it doesn't mean that they are different. No, we know they're not. Also, My issue is you, so you're you saying that there's people. few, yes. few good. Yes. We, no, 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 for me, the majority have to be if bad. You keep bad. Talking, Otherwise, we won't be getting the kind if, of thing we're getting if we keep when talking we're constantly about, what frustrated what by inefficient governance. If we keep talking about this, you will prick the conscience of many of them who have been overwhelmed by these few bad people that will say, don't bother, you can't be the one to change the system. I'm still, Join us. No, I'm, I'm still trying to understand okay. what would bad. be the benefit of gagging people the masses. No, no, from it, speaking people out. have already said why. It, it, I, it's sorry, it's I, I, I get themselves in power. So that nobody yeah. can They will choose the next president them. after yeah. this one. They can have it will be somebody who is without criticism. With the, in the same, with the same agenda as them. It's about continuity. You see, in life, truly, it is good to have continuity. Mm. But when a bad person is the person that wants to continue what he's doing, Unchecked. that's when, you, that's when you, you, you complain. If you had a brilliant person, everybody is going to hospitals, yes. everything is working. The and then, and, and he and he almost looks like he's anointing the next person. You yeah, would actually believe him when he says, that yes. man there should be the next president. Why, the why they want to shrink these spaces is, you say, the greatest obstacle to man is fear. Right. And it is man-made. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and so the only way you can perpetually perpetuate yourself in office mm -hmm. is to create fear. fear. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do with religion. Right. You create fear. Mm -hmm. And then you pretend to provide the solution. Yeah, that's right. In politics also, you create fear in the mind of the people, yeah. and then you pretend also to provide the solution. solution. So when they create fear in the mind of a lot, majority of Nigerians, even I, I, I can bet you that as you were coming here, there are some friends that you will call that you're going to do this, ah, please be careful, Absolutely. because that fear is already there. The reason why he was part, another way you look at it, if you feel that we have good people, yes, we have a lot of good people in Nigeria, but they intimidate others. And again, the way we get po certain positions in this country, they make it such that you find out that somebody who is the lead gets someone to follow him. And because of that, he sees that as a favor. And if he said, I want to do X, he will follow him. Yeah. So he might not really be a bad person. So immediately he sees someone that can give him good direction, he will quickly follow and do the right thing. As you can see, I'm the people's messenger. I didn't send myself. After the break, the opening lines of Chuka's advocacy will make it clear that our man Chuka not a saint. 